Welcome to the Put On Waivers Media Group, home of the Put On Raiders podcast and the Student Body Right podcast. This is your place for the best breakdowns and the best insight for those who fight on and bleed silver and black. Now, here are your hosts, Dwayne Douglas and Ryan Holmes. And welcome, everybody, to the glorious episode of the Student Body Right USC podcast. I'm your host, Dwayne Douglas, and as always, I am podcasting off the beautiful shores of the Pacific Ocean. Beautiful day. Just the weather has been took t- that gloom out of the air, and now it's just 75 and sunny all day in Southern California. So we all know we appreciate that. Um, P O R S B R is my Twitter handle. All you USC fans, and you got a lot. You guys have a lot of comments, a lot of stuff going on. This 20. 24 class is looking kind of chunky. I think we can all agree with that. It's looking good. Um, you know, it's probably every position in the world except for quarterback, but I'm not really worried about that because it's either going to be Miller Moss, it's either going to be uh, Malachi Nelson, or it's going to be a transfer. But somehow, some way, um, it's going to happen. They're going to do something big at quarterback. Like if you're a quarterback in the nation, why would you not want to play for the preeminent play caller in all of college football? And this program at USC that's going from the Pac-12 to the Big Ten, and it's just looking like it's a flaw. It's going to be a. a it looks like everything's going flawlessly right now in Southern California with the recruiting class. It's going just so well, and I can't even can't wait to talk about it. But I think one thing I want to talk about real quick: a couple of news and notes, real quick. Um, one is about Oregon, and I think Oregon, who has been our rival in a lot of this stuff. Oregon, who has who's been like kind of a thorn on our side with some of these recruits, some of these recruits are realizing that, you know, until they get this whole thing situated where it's almost like a AFC, NFC in college football, let's be real. It's not looking good for these teams who don't know what the Pac-12 is going to be in the future. And they don't know what conference they're going to be in the future. I mean, let's be, let's be real. I mean, they're sitting here looking right now. And they're saying to themselves, you know, they're looking at the Pac-12 in Oregon, but they're also looking at the Big Ten saying, hey, do you guys want some more West Coast representation? We got Nike, we got Philip Knight, all that stuff like that. Um, they don't bring, you know, a whole lot more than that. But, you know, because, you know, but they do, they, they, they do recruit well. They have built a program that's pretty good on Oregon, even though on this program we make fun of the Ducks here once in a while. But for the most part, they they have been a really good team for, throughout the years. They have been able to get, get over the hump and win a championship. But those are harder to come by in college football when you consider you have to only maybe, you know, win, lose one game. And hey, you got to have all the dogs up front to beat, to beat the teams from the SEC. So let's just, you know, that that was one thing I want to talk about. Um, was that with that quick, quick little blurb on Oregon? Like, well, where, where do they go? Um, as far as recruiting, and I think they're, they're they're losing some of these recruiting battles to SC because of where they stand in the Pac-12, and they don't really have anywhere to stand. They're not strong enough to be an independent, so that's that's going to be a tough sell for people. Only only teams like Notre Dame, stuff like that, you know, teams like that can be independent um, college football programs. Even Notre Dame might find, might find it hard to stay independent. They might ha- might be forced to go into a conference as far. Um, as far as that goes, but you know, USC continuing, you know, it's kind of beating Oregon. Um, you know, you, it's, it's just, it's just so many free dunks you can give away, you know, it's so, so many, it's so many Jordans, Jordan ones or twos you can give away before they realize that SC is probably the better fit. Um, and then for the Pac 12, like, what are we doing? Like, do they have a contract with the TV network yet? Do people realize that they have all these quarterbacks? Do people realize that, you know, they have the Heisman Trophy winner in this conference? Like, it's not looking good for um for that. I mean, I'm not sure where you might have to go to a game in the Pac-12 to see Pac-12 football this year because it doesn't look it doesn't look good for for all these teams and and, and you know this this um TV deal that hasn't come yet. It's already it's next week is gonna be next week is gonna be July. My birthday's right around the corner around the uh, Fourth of July, so it's not looking good for them as well. So one of our one of our one of these teams out here who just like for some reason. They just hate. I mean, I don't know where it is, um, whether you're listening to, it doesn't matter what podcast you're listening to, there's always a little bit of hate from the Oklahoma fans. I don't get it. He wanted to leave and he wanted, if money was no object, I don't, I just, if money was no object, most people would live 
where Lincoln Riley lives now than where he lived in Oklahoma. It's not a knock on Oklahoma. I'm not knocking Oklahoma. I only been to Oklahoma once, and it was kind of drove my way to California. I, it, when I drove, when I drove cross country to, uh, to to move out here. So at, at the end of the day, I, I do think it's funny that when you look at this list I'm about to show you here is like Google Trends gives you an opportunity to see where like where things are, um, like where people are, what states and what topics are trending, right? So if you go to, if you go here and I can show you right now, like, you know, you go to, you type in USC football on Google Trends, on trends.google.com. The first state, obviously, California. That's it, boom. The, 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 obviously, the USC football team is on Californians' mind. It makes all the sense in the world. The second, the second, the second team, the second state that looks up USC football in all the United States isn't even a rival of, of USC. It is the state of Oklahoma. So we are definitely on their mind. And that when that in him leaving Oklahoma really still burns Sooner fans. The third on this list to give you a top five here, and these these are the team, these are the states ranking that that will that 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 have looked up have googled USC football the most. The third state is Utah. Very interesting that is that is Utah. The fourth makes sense. Um, Hawaii, all, all the Polynesian, um, you know, it's just, it's just, um, stuff out there. Fifth is for some reason U.S. The other, they call themselves the other USC, but we know there's only one USC, and that's South Carolina. So it's just, it's just it is kind of funny that um, that you know Cal that Oklahoma second. We don't play Oklahoma at all. Um, I think the next the top to round out the top ten, you got you got Nevada, which is where you get a lot of transplants from to, to Cal from, from California. You got Oregon. Um, Arizona, uh, Idaho, and Alabama all looking up USC all the time. Um, so they're looking up USC a lot because of players like Dakota Fields. Dakota Fields, um, very long, rangy, um, just a, a super athletic cornerback uh, out of um, out of out of a junior per Sierra, um, Bardina, California. You know, twenty. He's part of that twenty. 24 class and he really is just i mean it's 6 to 100 185 pounds but the guy is a corner who is a flat out forget about it you put you put him on that team's best receiver and then you just you just worry about everybody else i mean that's how that's how talented he is right now right now he goes into this class as a four star might and that might change, but he can just do it all as far as far as that goes. I mean, six two. When you have guys, and this is the thing I'm talking about when you talk about getting elite players to come back to start realizing that SC is the place to be. This isn't like you know a lot of these teams have like five nine corners, five eight corners. You know, guys who have you know good athleticism, but they just you know they can't deal with the balls that are thrown over their head, the jump balls, the fifty fifty balls. He can deal with all that and still get down and do all the things that you need to do in pass coverage to to make plays happen. I mean, they're just they're just they're just really building a really good secondary. We're gonna go over a couple of guys, um, and and as we get closer to the season, we're gonna go start shifting our gears to the to, to the twenty um the twenty twenty three Trojans. But you know, next couple of weeks because we have time, let's just rock through some of these guys. But um in the in the in the in the twenty 24 class but like yeah it's going to be it's going to be fun to watch him play on the outside because he can cover pretty he can cover anybody and he is his footwork I think that one of the things I love about him he just doesn't he doesn't um panic when the ball's in the air you saw that um you, you see that with, with a lot of these, these cornerbacks they relish the moment when you challenge them when you challenge them and the ball's in the air they knock it down so he he's, he does a great job of that he can play inside, can play outside, can cover pretty much any receiver you, you you ask him to. Is physical enough to do that, and has the foot speed to handle all the all comers as far as far as that goes. Has that track speed, which is really cool. So that's something where he can't, you can't. It's gonna be not gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard for people to run away from him. And when he does get beat, he has that makeup speed 
to still make up make up make up um make plays on the ball and get PBUs. So look for that from um Dakota Dakota Fields. And again, another guy who when you look at when you look at their crystal ball situation, he was, you know, on his way, look like to Oregon. Right? Look, they look, look like he was on his way to Oregon, but no, he didn't. He, he didn't go to Oregon. He went to SC because you can't, like I said, that combination of high level athletics and high level academics, it's just going to be hard for team, hard for parents and all these guys out here to really, um, to really say they're not going to, and they're not going to jump in that pool. You got to jump in that pool because because it's not, and very few teams have that ability. Very few, very few schools have that ability to get the best of both worlds and give you a full scholarship and all those things like that. So that's Dakota Fields in a nutshell. You look out for him for next year. Um, Jason, Jason San, Zan Demela, um, center, um, interior lineman, if you will. So he's a guy who I really, who I think that for, for um, SC is gonna be another, just, you know, Henson's just doing a great job as far as, it's continuing this whole, you know, beefing up this offensive line for what's coming next year. And we know what's coming. We know what's coming next year. We know what's coming next year for, for, uh, for, for USC. Um, and that's playing in the Big Ten. And the playing in the Big Ten is going to be a huge deal. you got to have offensive linemen who can move the pile. Offensive linemen who can do all the things and be versatile and run that GT counter, all those things like that. You need those guys, and and if, if if you get those guys, then you're good to go. If you don't get those guys, you're gonna get run over by even some of the more mediocre teams, um, in in the in the um, in the Big Ten. So four score four four star guy, um, 6'3", 285 pounds. You know, obviously weight room, all that stuff like that will will, will come into play once he gets to once he gets to USC. But he is a he is a hard commit. He committed. On, uh, on 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 uh, June twentieth, um, Henson just again Josh Henson just been just been phenomenal as, as far as that goes. So he, even I don't know these guys can. It's easy to sell SC. It's easy to sell your all, all these things you know about California when you're especially when you're not even when you're coming to you know, and then you have to worry about any of the bills any, any of the the you know light bill you know apartment all these things like that you don't have to worry about those things because all you gotta do is worry about being on time being a good student and being a good football player um from florida clearwater florida so that national appeal of sc that national um outlook for the for this for this um program is back again they're not only just putting the fence around themselves that electric fence around california but they're also doing a great job of getting people like this from Florida, like th this class is filled with a bunch of guys who will who come from um, from from California, who come from Florida, who come from Georgia, who come from Oregon, um, come from Cheshire, Connecticut, my old stomping grounds out there in CT. I mean, there's so many where um, McKinney, Texas, like they're really they're really starting to really push the envelope as far as doing that, and it's something that you know I think that's the reason why you have seen all these guys, you know, kind of getting upset about what USC has been able to, what USC is doing. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be a joy to watch. So a little bit of background here, like I said, next, and all these next, all these up show, all these, all these upcoming shows are gonna be like, you know, a little bit of a story. And then we're gonna go ahead and kind of go over a couple of guys so you can get familiar with those names before next season come around. So Dakota Fields and um, Jason, um, Jason um, Zandamelia, um, he, you know, uh, an offensive lineman and a, and a, and a cornerback join the USC Trojans here, um, out here in Southern California, as we always fight on here on the Student Body Right USC podcast. So I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna take a, we're gonna we're gonna say goodbye for right now. Come back, um, the next episode, and we're gonna talk about a couple. Of main, you know, let's just break down. We'll break down Elijah Elijah Newby from from, from Connecticut, um, and we'll check out him, and then we'll also check out Jarvis Boatwright. Um, as well, safety. So we'll do two two episodes, so two an episode. So like I said, everybody, you know, keep this, keep the, you look like your body needs to keep this going. You know, this, this class is getting getting better and better. It's getting, it's already now it's moving up in, into the top five, top top six, top seven, in a lot of people's eyes. And it's going to be a class that's going to be very difficult to, they, what they're doing is making it very difficult to compete with 
what we all know is just a beautiful, a beautiful area to live in, a beautiful stadium to play in. And I'm not going to call them beautiful, but, you know, look at Riley, he's, you know, look at Riley can, can do his thing as far as calling plays and, and, and his staff has been top notch as well so far in recruiting. So, all right, we'll see you next episode. <laughs>